Hello there. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks very much for joining me on Facebook Live today. Uh, Simon Black here. I'm here to, to uh, talk a little bit about my football career today and the Simon Black Academy. Uh, look, guys, we, we're going to wait. Obviously, we're just uh, kicking off. I'll, I'll be talking and answering your questions for the next probably three calls an hour towards an hour. Towards an hour, so um, we'll just wait for a few people to uh, to join and uh, to join in on the on the chat and the conversation. Uh, really excited to be able to answer some of your questions today. So I encourage you to to uh, to write in, write in and, uh, and ask me some questions about whether it's my football career uh, or the or the Simon Black Academy. Um, as I said, I'll uh, we'll wait a minute or so, maybe a couple of minutes before uh, I start answering your questions. We've got a few that people have sent in throughout the week. So uh, I've got them ready to go. Um, but as I said, we'll just wait a, a minute or so for a few people to, to join into the, uh, to the telecast, if that's what it is. This is the first time I've done this, so I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to it myself, new experience for myself as well. Um, look, I guess I should kick off a little bit to tell you a little bit about the Simon Black Academy. Uh, we've been going, this is our third year now. Um, we've got a great partnership with Torrens University. They're our education partner and uh, we, we run a diploma of sports development in our first 12 months, uh, which leads into a Bachelor of Business major in sports management. So look, I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we go along, but um, we'll just wait for a, a few people. We've got, looks like, eight people on already. Um, we'll wait for a few more, another minute or so, and um, I'll start answering your questions. Thanks for joining. Hope you can hear me. <laughs> I've also, I should mention, I've got Courtney here to my right helping me with, uh, she's just going to pass me a few questions that have been sent in throughout the week. So, um, look, we might, we might kick off here, um, guys. So, um, look, the first question I've got that's coming from Kyle, and uh, he wants me to give a shout-out to Joey, Harry, and Colonel um, Perth Crop 2017. Hey, boys, hope you're well. Hope your cert four is going well. Um, look, what... what the question is from Kyle, what was your favourite team growing up before you joined the AFL? Um, look, I was a Perth boy, West Australian growing up, and I was a massive West Coast Eagles fan. Um, the West Coast Eagles were like pretty much all of them were my idols growing up. I was lucky to go to the 994 um, grand final. My, my dad and I went across from Perth, and uh, Chris Mainwaring was particularly uh, my, my hero, and, and also Peter Matera was another hero. So the two wingmen were uh, my, my, I guess, childhood heroes growing up. So I was a big Eagles fan. Uh, when the Fremantle came into the competition, I had, a, I guess, a bit of a choice to make, and um, East Fremantle was my junior club or my waffle club, but I always stuck with uh, with West Coast. And even when I played for the Lions, I always used to keep an eye out on, on how the Eagles were tracking. So I was a big West Coast man. Thanks for the question. Um, looks like we've got about uh, a few more people joining in slowly here, so it's nice to have your company. Guys, thanks very much for, for tuning in. Again, ask as many questions uh, as you'd like of myself for the next uh, three quarters of an hour of an hour. Anything about my football career, um, I'll try and give you a bit of insight into, I guess, um, my early days playing junior footy and my aspirations and dreams of becoming an AFL football and the journey along the way um, to make it into the AFL. So I'm more than happy to answer any of those sort of questions and also tell you a little bit about uh, the exciting, the exciting uh, Simon Black Academy, which has been going for two or three years now, and um, we're kicking off for the new intake at the end of February. So um, I'll, I'll fill, you, fill you in a little bit more about that as we go along. Um, guys, just another question. Here we go. Um, another one sent through is, uh, what was your biggest setback on your path to becoming um, an, an elite footballer from Ethan? Thanks, Ethan, for the question, mate. Um, Look, I guess for me, when I was about 15 or 16, uh, I had an issue with my spine, with my back, um, called Schulman's disease. And um, it's actually not, not overly common, but um, I've heard quite a few people over the years that can have this complaint. And for me, when I was about 16, going through adolescence, um, I had a lot of pain in my, in my spine, in my, my lumbar, lower spine. And I couldn't play sport for about 12 or 18 months. And as a 16-year-old, you, I guess you, you tend to think you're... Uh, your, your footy career or your dreams of playing AFL were going to be over. So for me, that was a really tough period. Um, what it did do in that time, the 12 months I was out, it really instilled a lot of, um, I guess, desire to, to when I got healthy again, to really have a crack at 
been the best I could be. Um, I, I was one of those people that never thought they'd make the AFL. Uh, I always had a bit of self-doubt and I had a little bit of, um, you know, yeah, just self-doubt. And so um, when I came back, I, I was really strong about what were the specific things I need to work on to improve my game and uh, to, to make it or potentially get drafted. And um, two of those things were... Um, I was always lacked a yard of pace, um, so I, I seeked out the West Coast Eagles sprint coach, and I did some training with with uh, a man called Mark Neitz, who helped me a lot over in Perth um, with my speed. Um, and also, I've always been a pretty skinny guy, so um, I embarked on a on a weights program, um, you know, three or four weight sessions a week. Um, really big on really big on my nutrition and diet. Um, there's a bit of a rule with putting on muscle mass, or a bit of a, a saying, I guess it's. 70, 80 percent to do with your diet, and you know, only 20 percent the amount of weight, uh, you know, the amount of uh, gym work you do. So, being really diligent around my my nutrition was a big one. I want to put on three or four kilos um, over a six month period, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you when I was as active as I was, um, took a lot of work and took a lot of um, commitment, I guess. So, those are the two things: my speed and my strength in the gym. Um, my, my football skills were, I guess. Um, were okay as a, as a junior, um, was all about, I guess, becoming a better um, athlete. Um, I often also talk to our, our guys these days within the academy about having a weapon and, and what's your real strength. Um, and for me, it was, I guess, my endurance and being able to make my strength not just um, okay or good, you're trying to make it elite. Um, and that's something I really try to put a lot of work into, really elevate my endurance levels and um, become the best um, yeah, athlete, be able to get around the ground and, and over, um, work over an opponent, for instance, and those sorts of things. So having a, whether, whether your strength is your kick or whether it's your speed or whatever it is, knowing what, knowing what your strength is. Um, a lot of AFL recruiters look for, for something, um, you know, what we call a weapon, um, something that you can hang your hat on. And, um, and, yeah, as I said, for me, it was my endurance. So, um, yeah, starting to get some questions through, which is great. Um, I might read one off the... Off the screen here. Um, so, Marianne, um, Marianne Bryan, thanks for the question. Um, love what the academy is doing for the girls at Albert Park Lake. It's more of a comment. Thanks, Marianne. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, look, it's been it's been great. We, we're I guess a little bit of insight into into the academy. Um, we have currently have um, well four locations around Australia. We've got Brisbane, Melbourne, Launceston, and. and uh, and in Perth, um, Perth are at Murdoch University down south of the river there. Um, in Melbourne, we're at Albert Park, as you said, Marianne. And uh, in uh, in Tasmania, Launceston, we're based out of um, uh, the University of Tasmania ground there, um, the old U um, Aurora Stadium. And in Brisbane, we're at Griffith University. So, yeah, look, it's fantastic to have guys and girls. We've opened the opened the academies to both male and female. Um, the entry age for the academy is uh, 17 and a half. Um, and as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we, we, uh, we offer a diploma in sports development through Torrens University. So um, that's um, been a, a great um, initiative and a great partnership with Torrens University. I'll, I'll touch on the, uh, on the academy a little bit, little bit later, but Marianne, thanks very much for, uh, for your question. Um, Bill Gregory, thanks for the question, mate. It's, uh, what was the highlight of your career? I oh, look... The whole of my career, Bill, was uh, no question was the premierships. Uh, I'll get asked this, asked this a fair bit. And um, I, look, I, I guess I was fortunate to win a couple of you know, individual awards along the way. Um, but I, I answered by saying look, the, the, the fact that you're a premiership I'm talking about, the fact that you've got to work so hard together as a group, um, you know, go 20 other, one other mates and takes more than that you know, to win a, win a premiership, it's, it's, it's over the course of several years. It's not just one year that generally it takes to, to, to win a premiership. You know, you've got to build as a team, you've got to, you've got to build as a team, and you've got to build individually and, yeah, as a group. So um, that's why it makes it so special and why it's so hard. Um, there's so many dynamics that make up a good side. Yep, you need, need no doubt talent and ability as a group, but you need a lot of really good teamwork and really good culture within a group, um, ability to be able to bind to your role um, and everyone else around you doing the same thing. And a real commitment to each other is massive. So... Um, you know, yeah, look, it was great to win a Brownlow, no doubt about that. It was, it was, it was really cool, but um, I certainly had more fun and enjoyment and my greatest memories are from those days we, uh, we won those three premierships. And um, as I said, they're so hard to win and uh, they're so rewarding to get there. So 
Bill, thanks for your question, mate. Really appreciate it. Um, got another one there. Uh, do, 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 um, Anthony Pierce. Okay, thanks, Anthony. Hi, Simon. Hope you're well. Uh, what was the reasoning? Uh, to start the academy and where do you see it in 10 years? Thanks, mate. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony, for the question. Uh, look, I've always had a real uh, passion for, I guess, for young people in that um, probably 15, 16 age bracket through to, I guess, 20, 21. Um, you can be really influenced and um, footy has been my passion, obviously, and I, I wanted to, um, you know, ha always have a, some sort of football program. But more than that, um, more around sort of the mentoring side of things and um, and this is one of the reasons we've set the academy up. It's not purely for the elite. It's for people who just love love the game and want to better themselves. So um, as part of our, our program, we're really big on – there's three pillars to it. There's a footy program, there's ed education side, and then there's the person's development. Um, so the personal development, things like leadership programs – sorry, I'm hitting the computer there. Um, leadership program we do, guys learn about goal setting, the importance around that, how to set goals. Because um, some, some of our students come in and I've never – set a goal before you know they don't know where to start importance of you know being able to um i guess um you know set short medium long-term ones a bit of a pathway about how they can achieve their goal so that's very much a part of our program as well and um i learn about nutrition and um eg like i said before learn, learn to put on muscle mass you know i was one of those guys that really struggled to put on on size and muscle mass and um and so if we can help our guys become and girls become better athletes and whatever focus they want to particularly work on with their game, then uh, that's one of the reasons why I set it up, um, Anthony. And as I said, there's three parts, the footy program, um, the education side and the personal development. So uh, I was approached by some people to um, to put my name to the to the academy and uh, obviously when these things, um, you know, you get approached, you, you go away and think about it. And um, But my first instinct was, wow, this is a great, um, this would be a great initiative and a great idea. So that's how it came about. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Anthony, and uh, thanks for sending it through. Uh, Jordan, the Lions three-peat team versus the Hawks three-peat team. <laughs> I thought this one might have come. Maybe one about Geelong too. Uh, who wins? P.S. <laughs> thanks, mate. Uh, hey, oh, look, I've got to be biased, don't I? <laughs> I've got to be biased. I've been asked this one a fair bit the last 12 or 18 months, which I'm sure... Probably every player that played in the Lions uh, three-peat side has probably been asked as well. Um, look, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of that Hawks team as well, no doubt. Um, you know, I, I like to think the Lions would be a better side. I like to think we'd get them, we'd play them ten times, we'd beat them, you know, seven or eight. Um, but you're probably asking the wrong person because probably I'm going to be a little bit biased. But, um, yeah, look, we, we, were, we were a great side. It was such a, a privilege to get drafted to the Lions. Um, you know, with Luke Power and Bo McDonald and um, I know Jonathan Brown a couple of years later and um, we were obviously young guys when um, when we were a really strong side. So um, we were so fortunate. As I said earlier, I was a big Eagles fan and wanted to play, get drafted by them. But it was an absolute blessing, um, you know, to, to come over to Brisbane. And uh, I still live here today in, in Queensland, in Brisbane. And, um, yeah, I love the club. And um, But to answer your question, Jordan, I'm going with the Lions. Stick with the Lions. Thanks, buddy. Um, okay, uh, from Mark, what are the top three memorable moments of your career in the AFL? Uh, look, I guess I touched on it earlier. My premierships were the, the three um, greatest memorable moments, no doubt. They're so hard to win. Um, the relationships that you have with your teammates to get to that grand final day and, the, you know, how united you've got to be together, how much you've got to buy into, um, you know, to, to your role for the side and, and to each other, really. Um, Makes it makes it really special. So if, if I can put if I can put the three premierships as, as one to answer your question, Mark would be better. Um, if that's one of the three, uh, the the first one I guess is being drafted. Um, it's really hard to get drafted. There's some I see a lot of really talented kids that that don't get drafted. Uh, so you know I, I remember it like yesterday I was at home in, in Perth with my parents and my brother around and. Um, and, you know, my name getting called out in the draft and it's such a, yeah, special moment. So anyone you, you speak to that gets drafted, so it's a moment you'll never forget. It gets a bit of a, a bit of a meat market, it's a bit of a lottery, you can end up anywhere. So um, to be from, to get drafted to Brisbane, my parents actually used to live in Brisbane um, before I was born. Um, well, actually, I, 
I think my mum tells me I was actually conceived in Brisbane, so there you go. <laughs> um, but, uh, I was born in Mount Isa, born in, up north of Queensland, and then um, ended up playing back in, uh, in Brisbane. So it was uh, ironic the way it all turned out. But, um, yeah, so getting drafted was the second one. I can, um, I guess, the third most memorable moment um, to you is... Uh, um, something I, I really loved doing was our... Um, training altitude camps we do to Arizona. Um, Collingwood, I guess, kicked it off and seemed a lot of clubs sort of follow thereafter. And um, that, that were really, really good trips to get away with the group and get to know each other a bit more. And um, it was all over pre-season. You go up to a town called Flagstaff and you sit at about, the town's at about seven or 8,000 feet. Uh, and then you, you climb a mountain there called Mount Humphreys and that goes up to about twelve or 13,000 feet. Um, you're doing, obviously, training around this... Um, Northern Arizona, Northern Arizona University, which has got great facilities. So that was a really great experience. It was a real one of those things. It was more as much a life experience as it was um, a training camp. So um, that's something a little bit different, but that was a really that was a really memorable um, time, and I got to do it two or three times as well. So thanks for the question, Art. Um, guys, again, thanks very much for, for tuning in. Um, I'm sort of uh, just answering your questions one after the other. I should take a quick break and just say, yeah, um, Simon Black's my name, guys. If you just tuned in, looks like we've got about 21 people. Thanks very much for uh, for, for joining to the uh, the live chat, uh, live question and answer. Keep sending your questions in. Um, talk a little bit about my football career and about um, the Simon Black Academy that we've uh, set up the last two or three years, which is based around obviously Aussie rules football and developing your game, uh, but also education part to it and a personal development program, which would hopefully um, help you you know, give you some direction and help you with your goal setting and learn a little bit about, you know, nutrition and all those sorts of things as well. So it's a bit of a rounded approach that we've um, put the program together and um, we've been going for three years now. So um, thanks for tuning in. I'll, uh, I'll get to another question um, around the academy. Okay, from Dean. What are the entry requirements for the academy? Um, well, the entry requirements, Dean, for the Simon Black Academy, uh, minimum age entry is 17 and a half, so it's school leaver type age. Uh, age bracket. Uh, we have aligned with Torrens University, so which is fantastic. They're a, they're a wonderful university. They give terrific student support, and the partnership with them so far has been outstanding. So we're very thrilled to align with uh, with Torrens University. Uh, the first year is a diploma of sports development, um, and it leads into a three year bachelor of business if you want to um, go on after the first twelve months. So um, yeah, that's the prerequisite. Um, 17 and a half, Dean, and um, whether you've you've done your ATAR or, or whatever it may be, it's not necessarily required. Um, there's obviously a numeracy and literacy little test you've got to be able to um, do, but um, there's no prerequisite as far as doing uh, your, your ATAR. All right, thanks for the question. Uh, what does a day in the life of an academy student look like? From Sean. Sean, thanks for the question, mate. Uh, Day in the life of an uh, academy student, we're an AM part of the day is the athletic program. So uh, we're out in the football field. The great thing is well, we're four days a week, Monday to Thursdays. Um, the AM part of the day is on generally on the football field, whether it's you know working on your skills, uh, whether it's a bit of conditioning running, whether it's speed work. Uh, so there's a mix of on-field football, working on your you know, ball, ball skills, uh, or in the gym, we do two weight sessions a week. Um, with our guys, a lot of our guys tend to want to put on, you know, muscle size. Someone to drop some skin folds and things. So we try to tailor our program around specifically what you what you want to work on, what you need as far as um, your gym program goes. Uh, our, our football program, we're really specific around trying to hone in on on skill development. Uh, our student athletes train and play with their local community teams, um, whether it's. TAC Cup sides in Victoria, or it's the Waffle the Colts in WA, or just state league, uh, sorry, community level sides. Our guys train and play with them, so we, we'll be really conscious of our training loads. Therefore, we're really big on uh, we've got up the craft type of training program. Um, and by that, look, if you're a midfielder like I was, and you want to work on your stoppage craft, um, we design drills around, you know about stoppage and how, how you can be, become a better stoppage player, working on a, off an opponent, off a body, um, 
you know, whether it's your technique and your timing off the ruckman's hands, the timing of your movements and those, those sorts of things. So we really try to break it down. You know, if you're a, um, if you're a centre half forward or a centre half back, um, being able to be really good with your contested marking. Um, how do you protect the drop zone and the ball? Um, how do you use your body? Learning about positions of strength with your body and um, all those sorts of things. So we, we try to really make it a really um, um, specific skill focus with our football program. So anyway, I've gone off track a little bit there. Um, yeah, and the, so the AM, AM part of the day is the athletic program and uh, have a, about an hour's lunch from, say, 12 to 1. And the afternoon part of the day is, uh, is the education side of things. So that's when you're studying your diploma of um, uh, uh, sports development and, uh, and where, where we put in our leadership program or learn about nutrition or whatever it may be. So as a part of the sports development diploma, you learn a lot about, about – um, a lot about nutrition, and um, it's, you, you get some really good insight into into uh, into the nutrition world. So um, it's great. Eight units we do runs over about the course runs over twelve months, and um, and as I said earlier, you can continue on to do a second year if you wanted to. Cool. I hope that answers your question, um, Dean. Uh, another one here. Uh, what are your thoughts on the current Lions team from Daniel? Thanks for the question, Daniel, and guys, thanks for tuning in uh, to my little Q&A about the academy and my football journey. Uh, look, the current Lions team, I think, as everyone knows, it's, there's some really good young young talent there. Um, it's been a bit of an issue trying to retain players up in Queensland, so I guess the exciting thing now, under Chris Fagan and uh, the new coach, Chris Fagan, 12 months old, and um, and uh, all the other coaching staff there, is that they've been able to you know, secure your... Um, Hume Cluggages um, and even Young Rainers resign, um, extended in after being there for a month or so. So across the board, generally our young guys are, are wanting to stay, which is fantastic. Um, the big thing now is to keep developing them and, um, and so the club can fight their way back up the ladder pretty quickly. Um, I've been as frustrated as, as, as anyone, I guess, of how, how sort of long it's taken for us to, to um, you know, to fight our way back up the ladder. It's been, uh, it's been pretty, pretty hard to watch at times, but um, I'm really, really comfortable with the great coaching group we've got there. Um, we're really well led by Chris Fagan and David Noble, the football manager. Um, and I think the Lions, probably probably more about realistically 2019 onwards, they'll start to really um, be a lot more competitive. We are very young again in 2018, so it's going to, for all Lions fans, um, that word patience, you're probably sick of that word, but um, unfortunately it's going to take a little bit longer and it just is what it is. But the good good thing is that uh, some really young Oh, sorry, good young talent there. They'll um, keep the club in good stead. Thanks for the question. Um, another question from Dean Ravenhall. Thank you for the question. Uh, would there be any accommodation near Melbourne for those who live in regional areas? Cheers, mate. Yeah, Dean. Um, look, we, we have a, uh, some great resources down in, uh, in, in Melbourne and some great staff, um, and there's some people down there who can – readily help with uh, with getting some accommodation. We've got a, several of our students in Melbourne have or are from the country. So um, there's been a you know a fair bit of work gone into trying to um, accommodate the guys, accommodate the guys with accommodation. Um, so it's um, yeah, so if you if you want to inquire about accommodation then um, there's some there's some assistance there to, to help you out. Perry, if you question from Perry, if you hadn't made it into the AFL, what did you want to do as a career? Uh, thanks for the question, Perry. Look, I, um, I'm not 100% sure on, on what I was going to do. I, I, my brother was a carpenter and um, he, uh, he used to always laugh at me because I was never particularly good with my hands. He thought I'd chop my hand off if I, if I followed him. He says I'm not, I'm not a, uh, a handy man by any stretch. So, um, look, I, I, my, my dad um, had, had a business and um, – when I left school, I went and did a um, business diploma at school, at, sorry, at TAFE, and uh, I probably would have gone down that business path perhaps. Um, so, yeah, I'm not 100% sure exactly what, it, what I would have done, um, Perry, but uh, I, I assume, I, I guess it probably would have been in the business field, probably not a carpenter. <laughs> uh, another question from Jono. Thanks for the question, Jono. Will the Silent Black Academy help me get into the AFL? Oh, look, Jono, there's a lot of... A lot of things that um, require you to get drafted, obviously. Um, well, I guess our, our big thing is we really believe we can take your game to another level, um, whether it's whether you're a talented, talented, really experienced, 
player or you're inexperienced, the game's really new to you. Um, we're very fortunate to have um, young Tom Murphy get rookie drafted to the North, to the Kangaroos, to North Melbourne, a few weeks back, and um, and I guess something I, I really tried to help Tom with. He was a, a midfielder slash half back, and um, some of the work around stoppages was something that he really wanted to try and work on. So um, those were skills, I guess, that I want to try and equip him with to help take his game to another level. Um, he was a big bodied guy, and when you when you've got a strength which is might be your, your size, you've got to be able to use that and be physical with an opponent or what, whatever it might be. So, um, look, I won't I won't sit here and say we'll get you drafted. No way, I can't say that. Um, so much of of what makes someone uh, the player they are is is the self drivenness, um, the determination, and the, the deep desire to get the best out of themselves. And um, so much as I said is is self driven. So. Um, got no doubt, make you make you a better footballer. But um, such a big part of the, the parcel, the package of getting the AFL system is uh, is self driven. So, but there's some tools along the way that will certainly help you with. Awesome, thanks for the question. Um, okay, here we go from Howard. Hey Howie, <laughs> uh, hey Howie. It was an honour to meet you in Wellington in 2017. Have a chance to pick your brain. What's your advice to young New Zealand teenagers? boys and girls to take their games to an elite level. Hey, Howie, good to see you, mate. I'll, uh, I'll see you over back over there in, in April. Look forward to catching up. Um, look, I, I think there's there's a lot of things of Australian rules footy um, that make up Australian rules footy. I'm talking about there's a skill element, you know, there's you've got to be fit, it's a running game, you've got to have an element of speed and strength. Um, but what, what I would say is as a young person, it's really important to – kind of live with a footy in your hands, um, you know, get the feel of a ball. I've got one here, actually. You know, I used to I used to spend so much time with a, with a football in my hand, just le- learn to twirl it around. Um, you know, the more you're in the backyard kicking the ball around, the more you've, you've, you've got it becomes a, an extension of yourself. Um, so no doubt just the, the hours that you spend kicking the ball around with a, with, a, with a brother, a sister, a friend, whatever it may be, and even by yourself, uh, whether you're kicking a ball at a, at a tree or at some sort of target, um, it's amazing. I, I'm writing a forward for for a book, a skills AFL book at the moment, and um, I just commented on, on when I was a I was a kid, just the amount of hours I spent in the park kicking a ball, whether it was with myself, or with my brother, and I guess acquiring skills that you didn't really know that you were picking up at the time. It was purely just by playing with the ball and spending time kicking the ball around and and, and challenging yourself. I guess that's the other thing, just being able to challenge yourself with your with your skills, and then. On the other side of that, there's the athletic side of it. So being able to, like I said, it's a running game. You've got to be able to cover the ground. Um, so, um, you know, becoming a really good athlete, um, both aerobically and, and from a speed point of view, is really important. Being strong, getting in the gym, so um, is another part to it as well. So that's, um, in a general sense, how, we, how I'd answer the question. The, the skill side of it, being such a skill-based game, is, is really important that your skills are good. Non preferred kicking foot, you know, get used to kicking on your on your right foot for me it was. Um, on your handballing, non preferred handballing side as well. So um, it's just the hours of practice. Thanks for the question, mate. Um, Jeff Chapman, Chaffee. <laughs> Hello mate. How are you going? Thanks for the question. What was your most memorable footy trip? <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> um, the most memorable footy trip, Chappie, was the trip, footy trip that you were on with us in 2003 in uh, New Orleans and Las Vegas. Um, I think you got the, the three votes for the best on the trip that, that year, mate. Um, uh, look, for me, while it was one of the great, greatest memories was, uh, it was 2003. We, we just won the third premiership and um, you obviously were all pretty, uh, pretty excited. We were all pretty up and about. Um, I remember the plane, the plane trip over to... Um, to New Orleans, we had I think we had five days in New Orleans, and then we went to Las Vegas for five days. So I learned a little bit about the um, the American culture as a young fellow on, on that trip. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was a good time. Chappy for everyone that's watching, and thanks for tuning in, everybody. By the way, um, talking a little bit about my football career and, and, and my academy. Um, yeah, just talking about the New Orleans footy trip in '03. Um, Jeff Chapman's asked me the question and. Um, Chappie came on that trip with us, and uh, he shouted us. Uh, he shouted the whole the whole team, the whole squad that went across a boat cruise up the Mississippi River one night, and um, and there was uh, it was full of 
this this cruise for some reason was full of probably the age bracket between seventy and ninety five. They were all they were all about about that age, and we were the you know we were obviously in our twenties and so forth, and and we were making a right real ruckus, singing and dancing, dance on tables, and I like to think we were respectful, but it got got a uh, it got pretty wild and. Um, and Chappie, that was that was one of my great memories of you shouting that trip for us all and having a great time. I'm lucky no one fell overboard by the end of the night. We all got off safely and uh, continued on our merry way and had a great night. So it was a great trip. And um, yeah, so O three in in uh, in, um, in New Orleans, Chappie was there, as you know well, was a great trip. Thanks for questions, mate. Um, Callum, hey Cal, well, Callum, Callum, um, Callum, everyone. Yeah. Came to New Zealand last year and played uh, played a game. He's a former Sunshine Coast Academy student of ours, and he uh, he came to New Zealand and played a game for New Zealand with myself um, against Australian AS boys, Australian AIS boys um, last April on the ANZAC weekend, and um, he equipped himself uh, really well. And uh, he plays some coaches at Redcliffe, and he's a lovely fellow. What's your question, Cal? Here it is, um, like How do you view the current pathway for kids in footy in Queensland? Yeah, great question, Cal. Um, look, it's uh, the, the pathway. In the, I mean, I've seen the game grow in Queensland a lot over over the um, over the last, I guess, fifteen or twenty years. Um, you know, it's 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 it does flow a little bit with the success of the Lions um, and the Suns for that matter too. So, um, look, the pathway is good. The, the AFL Queensland led by Dean Warren um, is terrific. Um, we're getting out to more schools, and that the AFL Queensland do a great job trying to. Um, develop the games within schools, and, and and that's I guess one of the reasons why um, Aussie Rules in Australia is 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 probably the biggest game of all because where it's it's grassroots up um, and from the schools is is a start. Obviously the Oz kick and so forth from there. So look, the pathway is great, Cal. Um, you know you obviously got the ability to um, to play in development squads and then play for your state and then obviously potentially get drafted. So. Um, I think the NEFL competition has been a great thing for, for Queensland footy. Um, you know, the, the higher the level of the, the NEFL competition compared to the Quaffle um, of days gone by um, is far superior and it's only naturally good for the development of young, look, 16 to 19 year olds um, that then hopefully go on to get drafted. So we're starting to get a lot more kids drafted into the AFL um, from Queensland, which is great. The Lions Academy, the Suns Academy has been terrific for that. And, um, yeah, so look to answer your question, Cal. It's um, I think the pathways are, are really good for Queensland, Queensland kids, and also on top of that, um, you know, there's more volume of better kids coming through now. Um, the Lions, Brisbane Lions list, as an example, um, in years gone by, when I certainly when I started, so many, so many of the of the list was from interstate, um, and through the Lions Academy now, we've got gee, I'd be guessing probably between six and. 10 or 11 guys on the list that are, that are from Queensland, potentially even more than that. Um, I should know the exact number, but it eludes me at the moment. But that, that's um, one of the reasons it's, it's a terrific work done with the Lions Academy and the Suns Academy is the same down the coast. So thanks for your question, Cal. Hope you're well, mate. We'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Um, a question from Sam. Um, do you require a certain skill set to join your academy? Um, guys, we don't, we don't uh, have a prerequisite for skill level. Um, as I said earlier, within the academy, we've got some really talented young guys. We had our first person drafted um, a month or so back to uh, the Kangaroos, young Tom Murphy, on the, in the rookie draft, which is fantastic. Um, so keep keep an eye out for young Tom Murphy. Great, great young guy. He's about six foot two, um, midfield half back type. Um, really exciting, sort of big, big body um, type of guy for uh, for a midfielder. Look, there's excuse me, um, there's no prerequisite for skill level. We've got really inexperienced people that um, are new to the games, new to them. So we put resources around with our coaches, um, trying to teach them the, the basic fundamentals of the, of the game or the skills of the game. And then also the, for the more experienced players, um, again, we're really big on trying to hone in on what skills they want to work on, how do they want to develop their game. I used the analogy earlier about, you know, if you're midfielder, want to work on stoppage craft. Um, we design drills around that. You want to work on getting your body bigger in the gym, get stronger. We do gym sessions a couple of times a week. Uh, if you want to be a better defender, you know, have your body work, your body positioning and things. So rather than doing long, long running drills, we try to really bring it, bring it in, hone it in on smaller, smaller sided games and smaller sided drills to um, to really work on your on your craft. So um, to answer your question, there there isn't a um, a prerequisite for skill, but um, 
Um, but we are really big on the better players developing through challenging them with better players around them. So I hope that answers your question. All right, from Riley. Um, Riley Greenwood, for someone who doesn't get recognised much, what do you recommend them to try? Recommend them to try get to the next step. Okay. Um, thanks for your question, Riley. And guys, thanks very much for your uh, for joining in. Um, the twenty three people that are, that have tuned in, thank you very much. I'm answering your questions today about about uh, my footy career, my footy journey. I love sharing uh, any of my background with with people and trying to help um, anyone with their footy that want to help and you know, develop as a, as a footballer and I guess also as a person. So I'm answering your question. So thanks for, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Um, we'll go for another, I guess, another 15 or 20 minutes. And um, so we'll try to get through as many of your questions as possible. So Riley, um, your question was, uh, for someone who doesn't get recognised much, what do you recommend them to try to do um, for the next step? Uh, look, I, I guess I mentioned earlier, Riley, I'm not sure whether you're listening in, but it's really important I believe to have you know a real weapon with your game um, and for me I touched on earlier I guess it was my endurance um, and probably my handballing ability so um, I wanted to be a midfielder just as an example Riley I want to be an inside midfielder so I knew I had to be really uh, good at um, in tight you know at, at a stoppage um, be really good clean at ground level with my hands um, my anticipation and, and um, and body work off an opponent uh, and timing around that had to be has has to be really uh, really good for an inside mid. So I really worked on those things. So I, I didn't want to. I, I wasn't quick and I wasn't a big guy. So being a, um, a fast small forward, for instance, wasn't probably going to be me. I wasn't going to be a small forward because I didn't have probably enough speed, which a lot of those guys need that for you know to tackle and to get off their opponent and things. So an inside mid mid was what I wanted to be. So again, going back to have have a real focus on what are you what are you good at and make it great. Don't just be happy with your weapon. If you've got a weapon, to be good. If, you, if you've got a, a Luke Hodge kick, if you're Daniel Rich that comes into the system as a 17, 18 year old, really work on your kicking. Make your kicking great and be recognised for that. Um, that helps you helps you get recognised, helps you stand out, and helps you um, catches the eye of people if that's what you're after, if that's what, what you want. So um, again, I, I mentioned earlier my, my endurance Covering the ground was 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 my strength as a young guy, and that helped me. Um, you know, I certainly wasn't quick, but on the flip side, I could at least cover the ground. Um, another example of that, I guess, is is Daniel Cross um, played for the Bulldogs and played for Melbourne. Um, Crossy was a wonderful wonderful athlete, great competitor, um, and that's one thing I would say as well. If you're a competitor and you're a, a real dogged competitor, um, that's probably the greatest strength that 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 you could have um, if you're resilient mentally and you're willing to compete every time you go out to play and get the best out of yourself, that, that's a real weapon. Um, and I use Daniel Cross as a great example of that. So, Riley, thanks for your question and I hope, um, hope that answers it for you. Uh, all right, Helena Baxter, just wondering how to get involved in your academy. Um, thanks for the question, Helena. Yeah, look, we... Uh, we have a website. It's um, go to australianrulesacademy.com.au. Uh, I'll say it again, australianrulesacademy.com.au, and uh, all the details are there. There's a phone number. Um, if you inquire through the through the website, we will uh, we'll get in contact with you quickly and uh, send out an information pack, how it all works, and um, and you'll get a good understanding, and insight as to a bit, bit more information about the academy. So um, I guess while I've got the opportunity, we are at the moment. Um, in our sign-on period, uh, we've got our new intake starting at the end of February. 26th of February is when we kick off again, guys. So by all means, anyone out there that loves their football, um, wants to take their game to another level at the same time with uh, an education along the way, then um, we'd love to, love to hear from you and uh, love to have you as part of the program. Um, I guess one thing I would mention with our, pro, with our academy um, is we're really inclusive, uh, a big part of a big... Um, feature of our program is that we really want to create a really inclusive environment. We get really all types of different personalities involved and the really pleasing thing so far, we, we, this is our third year we've been running um, and, and pretty much the whole way through we've had some really great connections and really united groups and, and people I like to think we have lifelong friendships. So um, like any organisation, a lot of it's got to do with the strength of your people and we have some, we have some great people involved with our coaches. Um, our coaches in Melbourne are Clinton Young, 
Uh, he's our head coach down there. Um, in Brisbane is Lee Harding and Nathan Clark, and, and I'm obviously around a lot. Uh, in Perth is Gary O'Donnell. So Gary's recently joined us. Wonderful uh, Essendon player, playing the uh, former captain of Essendon, um, 93, 90, 1993 Premiership player, and uh, yeah, all around good guy. So we've got some great mentors for our um, for our students. A big, like I said, a big part of our um, ethos, is, if you like, is having really good people um, that are going to take a genuine interest in uh, in these young people that join up to our program. And uh, it's all about, I guess, again, having an inclusive environment. So um, yeah, hope that answers your question. Um, thanks for that, Helen. Uh, Dean, again, thanks, Dean. How many people a year do you take for your academy? Uh, look, uh, we can take up to between 40 and 50 um, per, per academy um, in Melbourne at the moment where um, we've got a, uh, a second um, classroom um, which we've opened to, um, to I guess, um, hold all of our, our students. So. Um, which is which is really exciting. Um, we've resourced it with some really great staff down there, as I said. Um, Clinton Young is the head coach down there. Young is a great guy. He's built a fantastic rapport with um, with uh, with the students, um, and uh, we've got some assistant coaches around him to help him um, with with the coaching down there. So, um, yeah, I hope that uh, answers your question, Dean. Um, Helena, again, uh, how much does it cost, and at what age do the young people need to be um, age wise? Um, 17, 17 and a half, um, Helena is, is the entry age, so post school leave, school leaver age bracket. Um, we are aligned with Torrens University, therefore um, it is a post school um, program that we run. Um, cost wise, look, yeah, the cost we are under the fee help model, um, it's $24,800 um, for the 12 month course, Helena, so um, significant amount, um, but it's, it's, essentially under the, the HEX regime or these days the fee help where there's no upfront payment, students don't need to pay anything upfront, it's purely um, uh, the situation where they start paying it back to the government. Once they start earn, have a job and earning over around the $54,000 mark, so once they start, earn, start earning over that amount, um, they, they start paying back um, their, their loan. So it's just like a you know your, your standard university throughout, throughout the country, so um, that's how it works. Cool. Um, a footy question. Do you still keep in touch with Michael Voss, Jason Akimanis, Nigel Lappin and the other players from the Lions, uh, from Kaz? Kaz, thanks for your question. Yeah, look, I do. Um, all three of those guys, to pick those three, are in the state now. Um, but, yeah, you do. I mean, we don't we don't speak every every week or every month even these days, but um, I certainly keep in contact with um, a lot of the guys. Um, G in Queensland, um, the only... Former Lions players that probably live in Queensland still are um, Alistair Lynch, Jamie Charman, um, Clark Keating, who lives around the corner from me. He's a really good mate. I see a lot of Clark. Um, uh, Robbie Copeland, um, Dylan McLaren's moved to the Gold Coast. Um, and I might be forgetting one or two more, but um, yeah, that's the large majority. So yeah, look, I, I do. We have a, we have a, uh, a catch up pre grand final in Melbourne um, once a year where the guys get together and um, and make sure they try to get along, and and, um, and we're looking forward to our will be our 20 year reunion from the 2001 Grand Final in um, in three years' time. So I'm sure that'll come around pretty quick. But yeah, to answer your question, and that's the great thing about when you play in these premierships, you know the, the bonds that you form as a, as a group and you know, the friendships that you have are, are really um, you know those special ones. It's like the old saying of you know, like guess like your old schoolmates, really good good schoolmates that you don't see for a few years, but once you're together. It's like you've never. Uh, it's like you've been away for uh, a couple of days. So um, yeah, it's really nice to, um, to obviously be uh, to have those sort of friendships, those bonds with the guys. Um, Chris Ryan, is that you, Rabs? <laughs> I think it might be. But um, hello, Simon. Um, yeah, it is. Sorry, mate, Rabbit. How are you? Just wondering if you're excited as me with the Lions' potential new midfield for 2018. Yeah, Rabs, I am, mate. Oh, I'm very excited. Uh, look, it's. Uh, I touched on the Lions' list a little bit earlier um, through another question, but yeah, look, we've got some really good young, talented guys um, in the squad now, don't we? We really do, and uh, we just got to. Well, we are. We're retaining them. Um, a lot of those guys are from interstate, but the great thing about playing in Queensland, uh, so many guys are from interstate, so much of the list is from interstate, so you don't sort of know too many people around Brisbane, so they really, you really form a great bond and um, connection because you kind of have to because um, everyone's 
from interstate. No one really knows too many people, like I said. So um, I'm really excited by the midfield for next year. If we can keep the two Danes healthy, Dane Zorko and Dane Beams. Um, obviously, two A graders. One of they both had great years last year. Um, we lost Rocky, but you know, um, there's some great, you know, like. Jared Berry went in last year, and for a first-year player, I mean, he was absolutely fantastic. He's, he's a big-bodied guy. Um, it's important to have some big-bodied guys within the midfield, and he's going to add a fair bit. Um, Hume Cluggage got an opportunity there last year, great young player, and those two guys being first-year year players were, um, were nothing but sensational last year. So, um, yep, Rabs, I'm pretty excited, mate, with our, our midfield group. It's going to take a little bit of time, as we know, but... Um, yeah, you know, onwards and upwards. Um, well led by Chris Fagan. He's a super coach, super person, and uh, David Noble at the helm as well. It's um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So again, it's taking it's going to take a little bit of time. All Lions fans are probably sick of that word patience, but um, if we're just a little bit more patient. Um, we are retaining the guys now. We've got some really good coaches in the club who are going to develop the guys. So um, onwards and upwards. Thanks for the question, Rabs. Talk to you soon. Um, Question from Rachel, what is the most underrated but important skill to have as a player? Um, I love this question. So Rachel, thank you very much for sending this question in. The most important skill for mine is uh, resilience, is mental toughness, it's the competitiveness, it's all under that umbrella. It's, um, for me, that's the, it's a tough game. Our game's a really tough, challenging game. Um, so to, to play, if you want to play at the highest level, you've got to have a degree of resilience for you. Um, the game asks so much of you from a skill point of view, from a physical point of view, um, and a mental point of view. You know, you've got to cover 15 to 17 kilometres a game. You know, you've, you've got to you know, get up off the ground, wrestle, tackle. It's a physical game, and then there's the skill element to it, and then all that makes it up. So you've got to be mentally resilient, and, and that's the biggest, um, I feel, the biggest um, asset you can have um, and I guess the question was the most underrated thing. I'm not sure whether it's underrated, but it's, it's certainly for mine the biggest skill that you can have. So um, thanks very much, Rachel, for, uh, for your question. It was a beauty. Um, uh, Chappie, another question. What's the minim minimum age entry um, for the academy? Um, yeah, as I said before, it's 17 and a half. So we'll now with Torrens University and the, um, yeah, so it's obviously uh, um, post-school Lee Rage back at 17 and a half. Um, from Chris, do you have any weird game day superstitions or traditions? Uh, Chris, I, I, look, I did early on. I, I was one of those types that were probably a little bit, um, used to go a little bit nutty pre-game. I used to get really nervous um, pre-game. Even into my 30s, I used to get really anxious and nervous pre-game, which um, probably is a, a good thing in some ways. But, um, you know, look, the only thing I did long-term was put my left foot, my left shoe on first. <laughs> um, it's always just a habit. But, you know, some people do all sorts of things. They've got to tap a mirror or they've got to do this, that and the other. I said, after a time, said, because oh, I, I think I actually used to do a few, and I can't remember them exactly, but um, and I started playing a few shocking games. So I'm like, nah, the superstitions are out the window. I'm not doing them anymore. Um, so I got rid of them and um, just found that if I stayed nice and relaxed pre-game and had a bit of a joke with the boys and just um, – kick back and um, you know I was in a pretty good position headspace to, to go out and, and play so yeah not big on the um, on the superstitions um, another question here from Jen um, what is the best piece of advice a coach ever gave you um, thanks Jen for the question and guys thanks for tuning in again talking about my football career and the, um, the Simon Black Academy best piece of advice um, look I was actually back in Perth um, for a football function a few weeks ago, and uh, I'll, I'll get asked a question um, at this function along along those lines, and um, I, I I answered it by saying my East Fremantle football coach, um, he was the lead coach. His name was Tony Tony McHale, and he was a great coach in the Waffle. He was at the West Coast Eagles for a while as an assistant coach, um, and he said to me, he said Simon, you've got to realise, you've got to realise and understand um, the commitment level that's required to play AFL footy. Um, at the time, I was I think I was playing basketball and I was I was um, I was I think I was even skateboarding and surfing a lot and um, loved my footy, but I also loved doing other other things as well. Um, and look, I, I surfed throughout my whole career and loved that. So you need passions outside of outside of just purely footy. But I guess what what struck with me um, and he drew it into me, 
Tony McCall was that I had to apply myself a bit more probably to, to my footy than what I was doing. Um, I guess you could probably see I was, you know, I was a little bit talented, but I probably wasn't. Um, so things like I said earlier, I had to build my body. I was, I've always been a really skinny guy, so I had to get in the gym and, you know, rather than going surfing, um, you know, go and do a weight session, um, learn about nutrition, learn about how to put muscle mass on, those sort of things. So he, he really opened my eyes to that. Um, he was really one of those coaches that was a bit old school, really quite hard and firm. But when I look back as a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, I probably needed it and I probably needed someone to help guide me. And Tony McHale, I, mean, I, I never played two league games at, at, at East Fremantle in the Waffle, but he really helped shape me and um, made me realise that, the commitment level to, to get drafted was was um, something I probably wasn't reaching at the time. Um, so he opened my eyes to that. So, yeah, thanks, um, Jen, I think it was for the question. Hey, Cal, another question from you. Um, you mentioned before representing New Zealand for Anzac how important it was for you to be able to pull the jersey on. Yeah, thanks, Cal. Um, yeah, my dad, was, my dad was a Kiwi. Um, yeah, dad was from New Zealand, so... Um, that's how I was able to play for New Zealand last year, and it was a, it was a great honour. Um, my dad unfortunately um, passed away um, two and a half years ago, so um, to be able to to play for New Zealand and even do the haka um, pre-game against against Australia as well, would you believe was um, was a bit bizarre. Um, but even so, and Lukey Powell actually, my old mate, my old teammate, was coaching the Australian side, so. Um, look, it was a great, it was a great honour, and um, unfortunately, I, I tore my hip flexor at the first centre bounce of the game, so that was kind of embarrassing. And at the after match function, Luke Power, as I said, was coaching the Australian team, and he got up and he he uh, he said, "Oh, look," he pointed me out in the crowd, and he said, "Oh, look, Simon, you there?" He said, "Look, mate, it's probably only only right you reimburse AFL New Zealand for your flights and accommodation for that performance out there today." <laughs> so. Uh, I certainly didn't do any. Uh, I certainly didn't do myself pretty, did myself proud, and uh, and really help the Kiwi side that day. How did I? But um, you were terrific in the ruck, and um, I'm planning on going back again this year, and getting myself a little bit fitter, and um, and, and helping out helping out the Kiwis a little bit more. But yeah, we, we play against Australia's AIS or the New Zealand national side that I was lucky to play with. Play against the, the Australian AIS boys, the best 16, 17 year olds in the country, and. Geez, they, uh, they, they run rings around us, don't they? I think they, they beat us by over 100 points in the end. But um, it was a great experience. And, yeah, it was a great honour to be able to, um, I guess, uh, honour my dad in, the, in a small way. Thanks for the question, mate. Uh, Linda Summerfield, um, thanks for the question. Do you educate uh, regarding health diet requirements um, AF, such AFL for the academy? Yes, yes we, we certainly do. Um, Linda, thanks for your question. Um, it's, it's a really good question. Um, and it's, it's one I'm, I'm a little bit passionate about, actually, because um, I've touched on a couple of times in the last, throughout this question and answer about, um, you know, building your body. I was a really skinny guy, so I had to build my body. When I got drafted the Lions, I was maybe 71 or 2 kilos, so I was really skinny, um, light guy at 185 centimetres. I only really played at 83 um, kilos eventually, sort of in my mid to late 20s, but... I had to put on that, you know, that 10 kilos. So for me, learn about the, the importance of um, health and diet. Um, how do you how do you put on muscle mass? The importance of, you know, I touched on it again earlier. Um, you know, if you want to put on muscle mass, they say it's 80 percent what you eat, 20 percent the amount of weight um, gym work you do, amount of weight you lift in the gym. So, um, you know, just a little um, tidbit, I guess, that I, that I talk about um, with our academy guys. Um, the meal that I found, or what I did when I when I first started being able to put on some size and weight, um, was one small change that I did, and it was a little thing, but it was post going to bed at night, about an hour out from going to bed, so an hour or two after having dinner, um, I'd have a protein smoothie, and I'd put, you know, obviously protein powders and uh, you know, bananas and honey and yogurt and mix it all up, um, and because I was so active, um, I really struggled to put on weight, and it wasn't until I started having this protein smoothie every night and being really diligent about having it every night that I finally started to put on some size and notice I was retaining my my weight and and then putting weight on. So, so uh, anyone out there that really struggles to put on weight, um, that's one bit of advice. Obviously, you've got to be diligent throughout the day, having your breakfast, lunch, and dinners, and and your snacks throughout the day. But um, the reason off, you know. I, 
I believe and you learn that uh, it helped that smoothie, that protein smoothie late at night is because the best way for your body to process um, protein is when you're asleep. Um, the best way for, to get in your system and your muscles to, to process, that, process that protein, um, which as we know helps develop muscle, um, is when you're sleeping. So um, just before bed was a, was a great little tool and little trick that I, that I learned and um, I try to pass that on to, to our guys today. So yeah, we certainly do talk a lot about um, the importance of health and um, whether some guys need to lose weight, um, whatever it may be. Um, it's part of our, the, the, the dietary nutrition is a part of the Diploma of Sports Development course that we offer as well. Linda, so um, we certainly cover that a lot. Cheers. Guys, thanks very much for, um, for tuning in. I'll, I'll answer another another couple of questions. Um, we've been, probably been going for about 40 or 50 minutes, I guess. I'm not sure exactly. Um, yeah, almost an hour now. So um, thanks for tuning in. I'll, I'll answer another one here from Stubbsy. How are you, Ozzy? Um, Austin's one of our um, past Melbourne um, students. He does some coaching with us and has a real passion for coaching. So thanks for the question, Ozzy. It is... How important is goal setting throughout the academy and what are some goals you recommend uh, athletes to get the most out of themselves? Yes, Dubsy, um, I've always been, as you know, mate, I've always been really big on goal setting. Um, it's really important. I, I, I had a, a dad who was, um, I was fortunate to have a dad that was big on setting goals and he helped me, taught me the value of setting goals. Um, I did a little athletics as a, as a young, young guy and um, I used to set a lot of goals around, I guess, the progress of my excuse me, my middle distance running and, um, and he helped me a lot with that. So um, when we come in and to give you an understanding, uh, we have our um, personal development plans, which essentially have goals around your football, what you want to work on for a two or three month period. Um, um, physically, uh, might be put three kilos on within a, you know, a two or three month period. Um, it might be you want to work on your agility, um, so speed work slash agility. Um, so that might be under the physical point of view and a personal goal might be you want to um, get a job within the AFL world. So not necessarily an AFL footy club, but you might need to ultimately in time, but you might need to go and volunteer at a community level club or a VFL club as an example. So we have three areas that we try and set goals through. Phys football, physical, and then the personal one. Might be going to get a job you know, uh, under the personal bracket. So yeah, it's amazing I found, mate, with... Uh, setting goals, if you write something down, how it becomes, it's tangible and it becomes something, I guess, more real. Um, I'm not sure, but it just, it's amazing the power of when you write something down. And um, as I touched on earlier, a lot of our guys have never set a goal in their life. So it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed um, help teaching that process and keeping the guys accountable over it, um, over the, you know, the two or three month period um, that we set, particularly the football goals. Um, um, so yeah, it's a big part of the program and um, thanks for the question, Stubbs. I appreciate it. Um, Amber, Amber Clifford, is the academy good for development of females as well as males? Yeah, Amber, thanks very much for your question. Uh, it certainly is. Uh, we're open to um, females. We have quite a few uh, females within our program um, and the numbers are growing all the time. So, um, yeah, look, we, uh, we're very big, as I said earlier, on developing the game. The game, the AFL women's game is, is enormous and growing all the time, as we know. So we certainly uh, encourage all females that are interested in taking the game to the new level with finding with the interest in the AFL women's competition there's a lot of females that are trying or you know join up to play the game um, our academy is one where we get you four days a week to work on your skills so we like to think we can really fast track your skills and really develop your game really quickly so um, yep absolutely we're open to females if we have probably um, probably over between 25 to 35 um, across Australia at the moment, so um, very much be part of our uh, of the Soul Black Academy. Thanks for the question. Um, what do we think? One or two more, Courtney? Okay, another one from earlier, guys. Um, thanks very much for tuning in for everyone that's out there. Um, last question. I'll do another uh, live Q and A over the next uh, couple of weeks, guys. So um, yeah, thanks very much if you missed today. Um, we'll probably put this up on Facebook and you, you can watch it if it's uh, of interest to you, but I'll, I'll definitely um, do another one in time and answer your questions. Uh, so the last question, number 20, what was your favourite part of coaching at the academy from Trav? Trav, great question, mate. Oh, look, I, I just love trying to make a difference um, in the young people's lives. Um, you know, I, re I really, really have enjoyed that. I've been lucky to um, 
you know, been in the AFL system for a number of years and to learn or to pass on some of the learnings I've, I've had from being at the Brisbane Lions and, and in the AFL system is something I've really enjoyed from, like I just touched on earlier, nutrition, um, you know, trying to put muscle mass on, whether it's you want to be a better footballer, skills of the game. Um, it's something being a bit of a mentor for young people I've really, I really enjoy and um, um, something I'm, I'm really passionate about. So that's what um, is my favourite part of being involved with the, with the academy. And it was a big thing, I guess, to put my name to, to something. And I mentioned earlier um, when, I, when I did, I, I was really gung-ho to try and make the personal development part of the program um, a big thing, not just football, not just um, um, the academic side, but the, you know, for some guys building self-esteem, some young female self-esteem and confidence and trying to help create a bit of a pathway and direction about where they want to take their lives. So, um, yeah, that's been my favourite part. Mate, thanks for the question, Trav. Um, great. Well, um, I think that I think that uh, might uh, wrap us up today, guys. Um, as I said, it's the first time I've done this, so I really appreciate your involvement. I really appreciate all the questions that you've uh, you've had come through. Um, if there's any uh, any other questions um, that uh, you just miss out on as we uh, we close this off, then send them through, and I'll be sure to answer them the next time we do this next Q and A with uh, with Facebook. So th thanks to Facebook. Thanks, guys, for your questions, and um, yeah, really enjoyed the chat, and uh, we'll uh, we'll do this again soon. All the best.